And this is the this Happy, is Hour, Happy Network. Hour Network. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. <laughs> Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash late night parents. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents. Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents, Late Night Parents Live on a Wednesday night, two minutes past the hour. Happy to be here. I am your host, Ted Hicks. You can catch me on uh, Twitter at Real Ted Hicks or follow us on Late Night Parents on Twitter, Facebook.com forward slash Late Night Parents, Late Night Parents.com for our portal on the latest and greatest news. I want to thank uh, some of our partners that play us every week, near and far, XRP in the UK. To share, we're back on the air. <clears throat> Life Improvement Radio. Eric, happy to be back. Uh, appreciate the partnership. Mr. Scott Price, you and I are one every Thursday at 8 p.m., Happy to be on your airways. The Underground 90 every Thursday and Saturday, 12 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. Happy to be there. I want to thank a good friend at NGSC Sports, and they air us on the iHeartRadio app through their methods. Want to thank you guys, <clears throat> Brian Snow. Want to thank you for Arena Sports Network. Um, of course, Spreaker and iTunes and uh, every other medium that you you can possibly catch us at. But I want to thank especially the Happy Hour Network for allowing me to air live every Wednesday. I own the airwaves every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Happy to be here. Happy to call this place my home. Um, shout out to Back Sports Page. Randy, thank you for all that you do. Uh, big shout out to our friends at I-95 Sports Network, Bobby Blackjack. Sorry, I couldn't catch up with you this Sunday. I've been under the weather. Um... Looking forward to the next connect or the next time you come out here for a Cosmos game. Um, I, it's easy for me to say that I'm doing this all by myself, but I'm not. So I want to thank all the people that work with us um, from our media partners to our public relations, um, the various people out there, Ascot Media. Uh, Christy Hughes. I mean, there's there's so many um, that we want to say thank you and give you guys a special shout out. Today is Mamba Day. Now, I mean, I could say Mamba Day, and everyone across the the universe knows that you know Kobe is retiring. Today is his last night. I mean, last game as a you know as an active player. So we decided to name that tonight's show, Mamba Day. As you know, every week we try to bring to you, um, you know, the latest trends and game changers in parenting, technology, education, sports, and product reviews. And that's what we've been doing, and we're going to continue to do it. 
there's so many different topics that, that we have touched over the past two years and that we want to touch in the next two years. So, um, I don't know. And tonight is one of those nights where this is the first time I'm back on the air in two weeks and my son is walking behind me in the studio back in front, opening doors, and, but I got to tell you, I'm just happy to be back, happy to be back, happy to be here, and that's really it. I mean, there's so many things in the news, there's the the, the, the politics that that's happening, the, the, the politicians are in New York, so they're disrupting downtown Manhattan where I work, they're disrupting all over the place. Last week, Long Island, like at my son's school, I received uh, one of those robocalls. But it was from the emergency notification from my son's school, letting me know that Mr. Trump is going to be in the area and that there's going to be all types of traffic delays. And, you know, if your son, you know, if, you're, if you used to your child getting home a specific time, you know, it might be a little bit later that day. So the politicians are here. They're invading New York because April 19th is the day for Democratic and Republican primaries that are happening here in New York. Um, for the folks that are local that are listening, 347-857-1947, you got to get out there and rock the vote. Exercise your right to vote. I hope you're registered. And if you're not registered for the primaries, you definitely got to get reg registered for the general election. Very, very important. Um, my good friends at Verizon, Verizon Fios, Fios New York, our team, um, we're a little quiet right now because there's um, strikes are, are happening right now. So... Um, there's been radio silence for me because, you know, every week I'm talking about Fios New York and I'm talking about, <clears throat> you know, posting it, talking about it, blogging about it. But um, there's there's some issues going on there and they, 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 they've got to work it out between the workers and between management. There's right now 35 plus thousand people that are on strike. And I'm sure they're going to work it out. They're going to work through it. So, but I want to give a special shout out to Fios New York, the good team that Monica and Misty run, along with my buddies um, Adam and Jesse and 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 the rest of them. We're going to be on our our monthly Twitter chat talking about better matters and everything else like that. So now that I've gotten past that um, that piece. And my son has run past me one more time with opening and closing doors. Uh, we have two guests tonight. So it's a hybrid show. Um, a little bit live and something recorded. Or something recorded recently and something recorded a year ago. But we have uh, Mr. Danny Thompson who's coming on to join us in the next couple of minutes to talk about Mamba Day, to talk about the NBA. It's a, it's a great time to be um, a part of that association. We also have the um, NHL playoffs kicking off tonight. You know, I'm, I'm thinking between the Warriors playing, I mean, if, if the scheduling gods could have gotten things correct, it would have been an early Warriors game and a late Kobe game or vice versa so that you can get to witness both of them. Not that both of them are going competing against each other. So we'll quickly get into discussion with Danny Thompson. Uh, and then probably about 30 minutes past the hour, we're going to talk with, um, re-air a discussion with Christine Connolly. Uh, she's an author, CPA, and the director of Bagley. She's both uh, a transgender parent and daughter. So we, uh, I thought it was just apropos because some of the topics that I'm touching upon with Danny that will be required for, that we'll touch upon with um, Christine. Okay? 
So we're going to get into the first interview shortly. And good evening. This is Late Night Parent. I, I like to say Late Night Parents live with our good friend Danny Thompson, NBA Full Court Press. You know him, you love him, and you'll hear him tomorrow on the Happy Hour Network uh, talking NBA playoffs. But there's a lot of things happening tonight, as we know, with um, the NBA. We know about Mamba Day. We we named this episode Mamba Day. <clears throat> also, I think the Dubs are trying to do something special um, tonight also. So it's a great day for the NBA, but we want to welcome back Danny Thompson. Danny, how you doing? Ted, how's it going, man? I'm glad to be out doing the show again. It's been a long time since I've been your airways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you and I, we talk all the time, but um, as for, you know, offline, but online, I, I think it's a special treat to hear the both of us talking about whatever the, the latest topic is, but it's all about the NBA today. You know, 413 nope. is all NBA, all Mamba Day, Doves. What's your thoughts? I mean, you know, besides Mamba Day, you have, you know, the Warriors going for the record. And don't forget, B- Miami and Boston are playing for home court tonight, and they play ah. against each other. So, you know, the winner of that game gets home court in the playoffs, which means a lot. And if Miami right. gets a little help, you know, from Washington, uh, Miami ends up avoiding Cleveland to the conference finals, potentially. So it's, a, it's, nice. a, it's stories everywhere. Perfect. Perfect. So, hey, I w- want to go into there's, – there's a couple of hot topics. I know we, we're tight for time, but um, you're a wealth of information. And mm-hmm. I, I want to get into it about the dubs real quick and say, so the quest for 73 wins. They're the greatest team of all time if they win tonight. But did you hear that there's a report that ticket prices for tonight's historical game at the Oracle has have, has gone as high as seventeen thousand dollars? You know, tell me, will the Dubs do it tonight? I mean, Memphis is a team that's basically broken down. There's no Mike Conley. There's no, you know, Mark Gasol. The team is full of injuries. It seems like everybody who's in Memphis keeps on getting hurt. So the question is not will the Dubs win this game is but the question is how much will they win by and will Steph Curry break those two records or basically set two records that could be t- potentially sorry, one record that could be t- potentially unattainable which is a three-point mm-hmm. record so three-point record what's the matching number he needs eight to get 400 for the season 400 wow yeah that's wow. like a number just, just think about it 403 points in a season Curry he broke his own record I mean, he set his own record back in March. So he's setting a number that's going to be pretty much hard to, to believe. So if you think about it, even if Curry played 80 games, that's still five three-pointers made a game. Right. Wow. What's, what's, and what's the second record that he's – Well, he's, basically, he's one, the first few, one, of, one of the few players in a long time that averaged 35 and 5. So he needs to score 40 points tonight to get to 30 points a game for the season. So that's just another little tip that, you know, 35 and 5, that's pretty much, you know – very few guys get in that realm. I think the last person that did, I think, was I think it was either Kobe Bryant or Tracy McGrady that got that level last. Jordan was always in that level pretty much every year. But just think about it. You know, a point guard scoring 35-5 and five a game, that's just insane. Shooting the All right. So, so uh, tonight's the coronation at the Oracle. Um, let's just say they go 73-9 and nine for the season. Mm-hmm. But they lose in the playoffs. Does it go down? Does it still go down as the greatest season ever? The greatest regular season ever. But it does, like Scotty Pippen said, you know, in his interview with um, our, good, my good, our good friend Jimmy Spencer, interrupted, it doesn't matter unless you walk away with the ring. And if Golden State fails in the playoffs to win a championship, then they're the greatest regular season team in the history. They won't be the greatest team ever. Hmm. Kind of like the Patriots were a few years ago in the NFL. Right. right. And- you know, probably the greatest regular season team ever, but they totally. didn't win it. Totally. So you would consider it a failure? Oh, it's definitely a failure. There's no way it's a buts. So does – tell me this much. If – let's just say hypothetically 
They get the 73 wins. They don't get a title this year. Do they still raise the banner that says 73 wins? I don't think you do. I think you acknowledge it, but you just leave it there. Like I said, you throw up a 73 banner if you throw up a championship banner beside it. And then really on the championship banner, you put 73 on the championship banner. I don't think you need a separate banner for that. Okay. Okay. And we're talking with Danny Thompson, NBA Full Court Press. Uh, the website, NBAFCPradio.com, has a great article up this week. If the draft happened right now, version one. And my question to you is, so who goes number one, Brandon Ingram or, or, or Ben Simmons? Basically, if you, I, I've talked to a lot of scouts, you know, in my travels in the NBA, and a lot of them are split down the middle on Ben Simmons and Brandon Ingram. Yeah, a lot of times, it's depending on who your needs are and what kind of roster you have around them. You know, the Sixers have the best shots in that one overall pick this year. And you look at the Sixers roster, and you look at Ben Simmons, he fits in well. But Brandon Ingram is one of those players, I think, that might be even more special than Ben Simmons is. Simmons, you know what you're going to get in the beginning. Um, he's not LeBron James. So if you're expecting that, you're not going to get that. But I think he's a much, I, I think, a high skill version of Lamar Odom. And when people forget, Lamar Odom was a very, very good basketball player. He just never had that switch to turn it on. That could be potentially what Ben Simmons' problem, ben Simmons issue is. But when I look at Brandon Ingram, 6'9", 6'10", frame, I'm looking at basically Kevin Durant. I mean, he has the skinny frame with the ability to score, everyone on the court, and most importantly, if the Sixers are picking first, you must forget Jerry Colangelo is buddy-buddy with Mike Krzyzewski, Brandon Ingram's college coach. So I think that becomes – the X factor, you know, getting that insight from, from coach K, uh, in that Intel since he coached him for a full year. So I, I, I guess my next question was going to be, who's the better small forward pound for pound. I'm taking Brandon Ingram. I like a guy who could actually shoot the basketball. Ben Simmons big issue is that he can't hit anything outside of 15 feet. And Brandon Ingram has that dog in him. He has that willing that want to win. You know, and he doesn't he doesn't back down from anybody. Ben Simmons at times this year has shown a little frustration, shown that I, I don't care attitude, even though he puts up insanely numbers at LSU. So I, I like Ingram a little bit more. I need you to look at uh, into your crystal ball because you're going to tell us. I want you to tell the listeners which one Ingram or Simmons will have a better NBA career. Hmm. Barring injury, Ben Simmons. I just think a guy six a six ten can do so much because he he's already a very very good rebounder, a very good ball handler. I just think the only thing he has to work on is the shooting, and that would just be a team getting a coach, you know, in there working with him in the gym and making him become a gym rat when it comes to shooting. That's something you can fix. You you you're given the ability to rebound, and especially his ball handling ability at six ten, it's it's phenomenal. That's why I say it's Lamar Odom esque. Like I say, if he works in the jumper, I think he's probably one of the two or three best players in the league within five years. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I take your word on that. I, I just know this much. Every media outlet is comparing this guy. Every major media outlet is comparing this guy to, as the next LeBron James. And, I, I, you know, that sets him up for failure. Immediate failure. And mm -hmm. there was a, a lot of talk about a $100 million Nike contract and, you know, similar to the $90 million LeBron James contract that he signed outside of high school once he left uh, his high school. But I'm excited. This is a great time for the NBA and looking forward to the draft and looking forward to seeing uh, versions, version two of your, your mock draft. Um, mm -hmm. We want to get into a very serious subject that's happening right now. Um, you know, also on tonight's show, we have um, Christine Connolly, who's um, a transgender parent that I had a conversation with, um, I I'm going to say, um, late last year that we decided to re-air on the show because it's just the topic is so sensitive right now with the anti-LGBT law that that's going on out there in North Carolina. I, I think there's some rumblings in, in Mississippi also, um, this backlash against the LGBT community. And I want to say, 
with this being the case, with it being happening in North Carolina, and you know it's being brought to the forefront, yes or no, should the NBA state their concerns and formally announce you know, that they're doing something in regards to the, the 2017 All-Star Game? Should they announce, like, what is Adam Silver thinking about? Because this guy has his hand on the pulse of everything. Why haven't they said anything yet, Danny? I think Adam Silver is letting Mayor Pat McCrory and you know, Governor Pat McCrory and the state of North Carolina figure this out without them having to pull it. I mean, they're hoping that what has already been done in North Carolina would get people to change and repeal that law. I mean, PayPal, um, one of the biggest companies in the world, was going to build <clears throat> an actual distribution center and call center out in North Carolina, at, in the Charlotte area, bringing over, I think, over five to 600 jobs out there. And when the, the, the law passed, PayPal was like, no, sorry, we're not going to do that. And you have other entities pulling out of the Carolinas. I mean, there was a, a pilot for Lionsgate uh, for a new television show that was going to be filmed in Charlotte. That's now gone. Businesses are pulling out. Bruce Springsteen's concert in Greensboro was canceled two days before the show because of the law that was right. passed. You right. know, Adam Silver is just hoping that that with all this stuff being taken away from North Carolina, that they will go back and repeal this law. I think, I think as we get closer to, I'm going to say, uh, the, the start of the NBA fiscal year, which will be in July, if mm-hmm. this is not resolved, I think Adam Silver, Silver has no choice but to pull the All-Star game from Charlotte. And I know it's going to be disappointing to my home city, especially for me because I wanted to be there, but it's going to be basically the NBA has its hands tied because if you don't pull it, you're supporting what the bill is. And if you don't pull it, if you do pull it, then that means, you know, that's another loss for Charlotte, you know, and I don't know how many more economic losses, especially the city of Charlotte can take because of this law. And, and and I'm glad you mentioned it. We're we're talking with Danny Thompson, NBA full court press. This is your hometown. This Mm -hmm. is your hometown. So this kind of hits home with you with something that, you know, uh, as egregious that's being put out there. I mean, usually when, the revenue starts to affect a situation. That's where people start to to back away or change their minds. I agree, but you have so many Southern conservatives out there that so far all that money's being taken away hasn't done anything. So, you know, like I said, Adam Adam Silver's just waiting. I think that he already had Atlanta has Atlanta has already put their bid in to take Charlotte's place if they can't fulfill the needs. Um, I just think it has to, there has to be something. I think Adams will probably wait till July to let Charlotte figure this out. And if Pat McCrory decides and the, the, the leadership team in North Carolina decide not to repeal the law or change it, you know, or, or do something to it, <laughs> the NBA has no choice. The NBA has no choice. Their hands are tied. There's nothing much more they can do. Well, I, I tell you this much. Um, you and I, I mean, I know you're going to be at All-Star Weekend. I plan to be there this year. Um, in Charlotte, because it's a beautiful place to visit. I've gone down there for CIAA and um, to see to see friends. Um, great place to be. Uh, Danny, I'm putting this on you. You need to fix this. You are the the, the de facto NBA commissioner. What would you do within the next 60 days? I would give Charlotte to July 1st to repeal the, to repeal the law. And if that's the case, and if North Carolina decides not to, then you pull the All-Star game. And then you put a a 21-day, you know, search committee for the sites that are closer to Charlotte, and then you make a decision. I, it's either going to be Washington, Atlanta. I would call Miami, um, maybe even Orlando. Uh, if you're going to make it an Eastern Conference team, be one of those four teams, and, you know, and figure out which of the cities want it, or you just put it back up on the open market. You get the NBA, you get the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees to make this decision by about July, mid part of July, and then you have a new All Star game set. That means you have still have the city has enough time to host and get everything prepared, and it goes from there. I think you've given Charlotte enough time to get this together, and if the state of North Carolina doesn't want to get it together, then it's their loss. I mean, we've seen Stan Van Gundy. You got too many corporate sponsors behind everything, so you right. can't. You don't want to lose your right. corporate sponsors over this. 
We've seen Stan Van Gundy make a comment about it. We've seen Charles Barkley make a comment about it. When, when, I mean, so Danny, when, when is Michael Jordan? Fed? Yes. I said, when does Michael Jordan make a comment about it? Ted? Hey, I'm here. I guess we're going through technical difficulty. We're almost through with um, the interview. Hopefully, uh, Danny joins us back. The question that I had for him, as I hope he's dialing back in, is if he's the owner of the Charlotte Hornets, what would he do? You know, I mean, it's only, hey, Danny, you're back. I am. Oh, okay. Um, So, So, hey, the question was, if you're Michael Jordan, owner, the, the majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets, because you've had Stan Van Gundy step up and say something. You've had Charles Barkley say something. As the owner of the Charlotte Hornets and the host team of this year's, uh, you know, next season's upcoming All-Star game, what would you say? Or what, what would we expect him to say? I mean, historically, he doesn't get involved in situations like this, but... In this day and age, I mean, it's different from being a player to being a, a majority owner, wouldn't you think? I think Jordan will probably it'd be, it'd be status quo for Michael Jordan. I don't think he steps into it too much. I think he would express his disappointment with the decision um, of the All-Star game being pulled in Charlotte. Um, he was, you know, say that, you know, they wish they could have had better resolution. he probably give the best politically correct answer he possibly could in the situation. I don't think Jordan takes a stand either way because the law doesn't change. Guess what? He takes a stand on it. Uh, either way, it's not going to affect anything. So I think Jordan would take the political response to it, and he would. That, that, that would be the, my my answer to it. I think in Jordan's case, he'd just be politically correct about it. I don't think he steps in either way. There's too many people that would do that for him. I don't think he'd be the one to do it. Gotcha. So, Danny, the topic of the evening and the topic of the show is Mamba Day. Um, topic of the evening is what else can we expect? Or what else can be said about Kobe's accolades and accomplishments? You know, it, it, it's, it's actually funny how you mentioned that. You know, three years ago today, Kobe Bryant made a, you know, he tore his ACL three years ago, you know, in the Achilles game where he actually, you know, hit the free throw on the free throw line. It happened three years ago today. So he wrote the statement. And it so happened to be ironic that today's his final game. And you look back on a career of Kobe Bryant, and it's, you know, you know every single accolade the man's done, you know, the five championships, you know, the, the countless all-star appearances, the MVPs. You look at one particular moment or you look at one thing about Kobe's career is that he's never changed. He's never changed for the times. He never changed teams. He's one of the last – he's probably one of the last, if not the last, quote-unquote superstar or megastar never to leave a team. And if you think about it, how many megastars never left their teams to go play someplace else? You know, that's the legacy that Kobe's going to leave behind. You know, it's more than the championships, more than the points, more than the rebounds, more than the assists, you know, more the the off-the-court, the the on-the-court ability. It's the fact that Kobe has been with one team his whole career. You know, you'll never see – you you know, the only thing you question is that is it going to be 8 or 24 in the Hall of Fame. It'll never – it'll just be the jersey number. Hey, so that kind of leads into dovetails into my next question. Uh, who did you prefer more, number eight or number number twenty four? Hmm. Twenty four. Twenty four was killer Kobe. Eight was playful, youthful, uh, spring step Kobe, but twenty four was out to destroy you. You know, he might have gotten the championships under eight with Shaq, but twenty four he was out to destroy you, and either you were with him or you were against him. It was one of the two. Uh, I love 24 Mamba more than I love 8 Mamba, but it's not by saying by much, though. Uh, the only thing I would say to this is number 8 Mamba was Scottie Pippen to uh, Shaq, Shaq. Shaq. And number 24, he was definitely Michael Jordan with getting those rings. Um, I guess a little bit of business. Did, he, did ESPN get it right? You know, the dubs go for history tonight on ESPN – the flagship station, and Kobe is on ESPN tonight. 
ESPN2 tonight, and both games are at 1030 Eastern time. Tell me about the business behind it. Yes or no, did they get it right? What would you have done? I think they got it wrong. I still think because of the fact that if Memphis actually had a competitive team tonight, I would have made the switch. But Memphis' team is not competitive. This game should be over by halftime. I guess the only thing that we should count on is Steph Curry going to hit all eight three-pointers in the first half. Um, you got to play Kobe's last game. I know the Lakers are bad, but even more importantly than the Lakers playing bad is the fact that Utah is still playing for the playoffs. They still have to win to get their hands on Golden State in the playoffs. So you have a little bit more of meaning in that game because, really, Memphis is going to go to the playoffs. Golden State has got a shot at 73 wins, yes, but Memphis is not healthy. Now, if Memphis had a full squad, you have Conley, you have Gasol healthy, you have everybody else healthy on the team, then, yeah. I would say the Dubs and, and, and Grizzlies any day of the week. But tonight, you got to give it to Kobe. It's the final night of his career. Let him go out. Uh, one question that I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Will you remember Kobe for the failed rap career, the rape case, or will we just focus on the five championships? I think I think you'll, you'll recognize Kobe more as being the most, more, more polarizing uh, athletes you're going to find. He's one of the last of, the, of a dying breed of guys who wouldn't have cared if you're with him or against him. Um, the rape case, you know, if people got to remember that. Uh, the failed rap career, uh, unless you're Tyra Banks or Brian McKnight, I don't think that people are going to acknowledge that. Um, <laughs> uh, outside of that, I think, you know, the championships are going to be recognized for it. But I think if there's one thing that's going to be, you know, I guess is the fact that Kobe wasn't exactly the guy that was the most liked guy in the locker room, but he was the most respected guy in the locker room. He is what they you know, say, you know, you're being from New York. He's an OG. He's the last of the OGs in the NBA. The oh, last yeah. of them. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so I think there's some unfinished business Kobe has to do tonight. I think Michael Jordan has a record out there of single game attempts at 49. Do we see Kobe? What do we see more? Kobe taking breaking that forty nine field goal attempt um, record or going for fifty points and it's um, kind of synonymous. He, I think they're both one and the same. I think it takes fifty. He'll get fifty points on forty nine shots. There we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think Kobe is going to come out gunning in the final game. I, I really think. You know, the question was I, I, I was at the the the, um, the Bucks and Magic game the other Monday night. And my thing with the Bucks guys and the Hornets and the Magic guys were over under on number of shots Kobe takes at 35. I said the over. Kobe is going to come out guns blazing. It's the last time. He might just go for 50, but the way he's been shooting most most of the season, it might take him 49 shots. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you know, I always ask you to look into your crystal ball. What, what are his next steps? What do you think Kobe's going to do next? I think right now Kobe will take probably a little bit of time off, and then I think you transition him into a TV career. I don't think he's much, I don't think he's much he's not much on player development. I think he's a little too brash and a little too you know not people friendly person to be a a scout or a coach or those type of things. But I definitely see him on television as a polar opposite to somebody who's a big time personality because Kobe's mind if you just listen to him talk basketball, is one of the they're probably the best minds you'll find. And I think he'll be a great analyst. Not a color guy, but I think a great a great studio analyst. I think he'd be the one that you, you would see on ESPN, like replacing, you know, I don't know, Jalen Rose or somebody. But I think he's that type of guy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Danny, as always, we want to thank you. Tell us um, best ways to contact you. Tell us what's happening tomorrow night. On, on Happy Hour Network, tell us tell us where to find you in the next up, few you know upcoming weeks. Tell us all about the best ways to hear um, NBA Full Court Press. Well, Ted, once again, thanks for having me on the show again. But the best way to contact me will be at NBA DT Twenty Nine on Twitter. Uh, the show Full Court Press is going on the Happy Hour Network tomorrow night seven at seven p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be talking everything about the playoffs for the next two, for two hours with myself and a group of, of a whole bunch of different people that have stopping on. So we're not going to talk. We'll talk a little bit about Kobe. We'll talk a little bit about the Dubs. We're really going to focus in on the, the eight playoff matchups. Also, check us out at www.nbafcpradio.com. All our awards are going up this week, um, different little pieces about individual player awards, um, individual performances. Um, the entire writing staff has you know, our, our votes for MVP, 
Coach of the Year, all the awards. Also, we've just created an app that's going to be that's out already on Android. So if you put type in the word Full Court Press on your Google Play Store, you're going to see our app. It will have all our shows, have everything on the website, also chat and also forms. So if mm. you want to talk about your favorite team, please, by all means, do that. Pass on to everybody, and most importantly, it's free. So uh. basically, you're, you're getting all our content, you know, everything we write, everything you hear on the radio. And like I said, we have so many different things that we're going to do with the, with the app as well, too. So and also follow us on Facebook at uh, uh, NBA FCP on Facebook. So and you'll see a full court press logo on there. And yeah, Ted, you know, once again, like I said, it was great to be on and talking hoops. And we got to do this again soon. All right. Thanks so much, Danny. Thanks, sir. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents. That's audibletrial.com slash late night parents and get started today. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents. We're excited because I believe in the queue is Christine Connolly, who's going to join us. I'm going to bring Christine on. Christine, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Hi. How are you? How are you? Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Christine, I got to tell you, um, with being a CPA, an author, the director of Bagley, um, our nation's oldest and largest youth-led LGBT organization, um, like I said, I don't know where to start. You, you are a transgender parent and daughter, and there's so much that we have to cover. I know we have a, 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 a really tight time limit, but I wanted to say welcome to Late Night Parents. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. You, you left out that I'm also a Little League batting champion. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you we're going to get to my my and, first Red Sox. And, my, yeah, and you know you you can't mess with the little league little leaguer either. It's always yes, in my mind and yes. spirit. <laughs> yes, so important, so important. So let's it's, it's get what, right what, into it. Yeah, it's what we're all about. You know, I mean, it's it's about the kids and the youth, the little leaguers of the world. You know, and, and helping yes. them grow up. It, it really is. And Christine, I tell you this much. I was speaking with our, uh, our PR department, and each week, or I, w- I would say uh, a few weeks ago, there was a suicide in Charlotte, and it was a suicide of, of a, a transgender teen who felt unsupported by his family. Um, okay. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you are a source to bring that message out to bring to 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 really to educate us to uh-huh. some of the 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 issues that that are happening with with you being a transgender parent and daughter um i would like you to just share with us your experience experience with you know family rejection and or alienation just i really just want you to share your story well, um, I, I will, and, I, and I'll keep it short. I, you know, and I just want to start off by saying, you know, using a big term, and I'll explain it as I go along, but cognitive dissonance. And what that means is we, we have an awareness of things that don't match and we can't fit, and, and we have an, an image and an idea of ourselves that it doesn't match when we look in the mirror or when we interact with other people. And when, when we keep that boxed inside... That's when the problems start. And and what it is is about freedom of expression, freedom to be who you are, and that's what it is. That's what transgender rights are about. And that's what human rights are about. They're, they're intertwined. They're one and the same. Um, but being transgender is, is, is certainly a, a unique situation. <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly didn't want to be transgender. I didn't, I didn't check that box. If I ever even had a chance to check a box to say, oh, I think I'll be transgender, and, and none of us do. 
but we have to learn to accept ourselves and live with ourselves. And this is where this is where the intersection uh, happens, where our families don't. In my family, and there's about 40 people, have not accepted me, and they've all said goodbye to me. There's one nephew that I talk to on on rare occasions, but other than that, I am completely disconnected from my family, and I've even been told to kill myself. I, I mean, I just just the the outrageous hatred that's there just because a person's transgender is is just unacceptable and and it's only because of this and because I can um, talk out and especially with all these suicides it's important someone like me who's been through it who's dealing with human alienation uh, I'm a survivor of an attempted suicide myself several years ago and somebody needs to speak up to stop this you know use our uh, it, it, I, I know they're all frustrated, but there, there has to be somebody that says, don't do it. And I'm, I want to be that person. Don't do it. It's, you know, it, things things will change. I can't say they'll get better, but they will change. You know, what happens today is not going to be what happens tomorrow. So, I, I, I you know, I've begun to take the time to learn and read about the transgender community. I mean, there's nearly 700,000 transgender individuals in the U- United States, and that's about, you know, 0.3 of the population. Um, so with, with, with that being the case, share with me some tips for people that have transgender loved ones. Well, um, I just want to address the count, too, because I think it's substantially much lower than it really is. That count refers to those people that are openly recognizing themselves as transgender. And because of the stigma attached to being transgender, I would think in time that that percentage is going to grow. I don't know how significantly, but I would not be surprised if there isn't 1% to 3% of the population that's transgender. And there was a... Lynn Conway years ago did a calculation, and she was a mathematician and an engineer, and she did some calculation based upon the facts that existed then, and she came up with a much higher number. But but as far as um, sharing about, you know, what what people should do, I think sometimes a simple touch of kindness, understanding, and acceptance from family and friends can absolutely make a difference of life or death. And the bullying that was taking place and does take place with the young children are amongst themselves, and that has has triggered this rash of young transgender suicides, is is just is just horrific. That, that when you think about, and everyone knows that this is what will happen if you do this to a person, but yet it persists. And the adults within these within the that are in the control of these young children are not taking an active, aggressive, remedial step or or process to stop some of this. And they ignore it, and, and then when the person kills themselves, they say, "Oh my God, I we didn't know," or, or you know, it, they they feel blindsided. But in fact, you know, the warning signs were there all along. Understood, Christine. Tell me how you, I mean, so you're the director of Bagley. So tell us about your your overall involvement with Bagley. Well, you know, a, a couple of years ago I was asked to serve, and I, and I couldn't do it right away because I was going through some um, my, my own some of my own changes, and I was dealing with, uh, you know, and I needed a few months to uh, just kind of conclude some issues that I was dealing with, and I did, and I and I joined them, and I, you know, as a CK, I come in and I try to offer some of my managerial and, and leadership and, and also financial knowledge, but what we're trying to do, what, what the organization is trying to do, and Grace is the executive director, and she's been there about 34 years, I think. And we're celebrating our 35th year um, and, uh, as an organization. Um, and what we do is we try to create a safe space uh, where everyone's able to participate fully in in, in life. And uh, it's a space for the LGBTQ youth that's free of sex, drugs, alcohol. You know, we don't allow weapons or violence, and, and we don't want to create any pressure or harassment. And all of this is is just kind of the magic of the youth getting there and having a good time and just being kids. 
you know, because so much so much pressure is put on them in, in the society that they can't just feel free and comfortable. And when they, we get them together and we don't let adults come in, it's a youth-driven um, organization, so the youth kind of police themselves, if you if I won't even use that term, but they're, you know, you have the older youth helping the younger youth, and, it, and it's a really magical formula. And, and you've, we've, we develop leadership skills, and we try to show them the best way to live and how to identify issues and then how to deal with those issues so that they can learn to advocate for themselves. And, and that's really what DAG is about. So, so I mean, I mean, Christine, you 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 are an author. You're a CPA. Um, you're a director of Bagley. You're a parent. You're a daughter. I want to go to the author part. Tell me about the inspiration for my first Red Sox game. Oh my goodness! Oh gosh! The inspiration it was born out of pain and prejudice. Uh, I'm dealing with judges in a court environment that treats transgender people very poorly up here in Massachusetts, which is one of the most pro-transgender states in the country. So I can really feel for other people in other states that don't have the laws to protect them. Yet if the laws are not enforced, the, the, the judges do not have to enforce them. And in a, in a family court environment, because it's a court of equity, not a court of justice, um, they don't have to follow any laws if they don't want to. They can just make whatever decision they want, and there's no... There's no recompense that, that anyone can follow. So what I did is I felt that the best way for me to deal with these obtuse, dim-witted, you know, family court judges here in Massachusetts is not to go play their game in a court of law, but to become as public as I can to, to be an advocate for transgender rights, to explain what's happened here in this court. And for the last 18 months I've been denied visitation with my child, and only because I'm transgender and supported by these judges. And to me, I, I, I can't, in, in, in my wildest imagination, I can't understand how a judge can can go about participate in parental alienation syndrome, which by itself is child abuse, when, as recognized by the medical profession today. And I thought if I could write just a spectacular book to show my daughters, you know, what I can do and who I am and, and to just express the, the uniqueness that I am as a person and, you know, understanding how much I love baseball and how much they love baseball. So I wrote a book that I think is second to none and, you know, I've been in touch with the Red Sox and they're happy with the book and I'm getting licensed with Major League Baseball, but it was born out of the the, the problems that that are that happen when, um, when a parent can't see their child. And it's no different than being kidnapped. And my daughter lives within a mile and a half of where my business is, and yet I'm not allowed to see her. And if I do, I'm afraid I'd be arrested. So I can't even approach her in in, in any kind of way because as an alienated child, she's been taught to hate me. And this is supported by judges. I'm just beside myself. So this this was my inspiration to keep writing and to write the best book I could. Understood. Understood. Christine, I mean, it's a, a, a really remarkable story that, that you have. I, I do have a, one question about um, the media is caught up with any time there's a sighting of Bruce Jenner and there's going to be um, an oh. interview <laughs> uh, with Diane, I believe no, Diane I, Sawyer. I heard, I, no, I heard about it a little bit tonight. I caught like one 30-second sound bite about him. But go ahead, about her. I, I'm not even sure oh. it's him or her because he hasn't said it yet to himself. So Right, he, has, he hasn't said it. Specific. What, okay, are, what are your thoughts? No, my question is, what are your thoughts when something like this is, you know, I, I, I guess for the transgender community, is, this, is Bruce Jenner a, a spokesperson or has – What's your take? Well, I, Bruce is not a spokesperson yet. She could be, and I'm going to start saying she because I, I think that's really the gender that she is. She could be. Um, it, it's really up to her if she wants to be. Uh, and everyone's a little different. I think because of his, his, uh, her, sorry, her, um, her achievements. I think it would be helpful if she did and was 
and I think, you know, this week, apparently, she's going to talk about it. Um, right. and, and that will help other people because the more it gets talked about, the more, I think, acceptance that there will be and there's more people like like Bruce and myself come out and talk about our lives and, and how my life has, has been tortured most of my life because of my gender identity that I couldn't accept. And, and then when I accepted it, everyone else went running out the door. But I think she'll... she'll She'll step up to the plate, so to speak. She'll dive in the pool, and, and she'll she'll come out a winner. That's good. That's good. So you you mentioned, I mean, at the onset you were alienated with your family. Are are you at least on on speaking terms with your family now, or is it kind of has it I progressed? Have, I, have not, I have not spoken to my family in five years. I spoke to my mother about. A year and a half to two years ago, uh, and that's that's the last time I've spoken to them. And, and it's, that's their choice, not mine. I mean, I, I've I've tried to reach out, but they just don't want to talk to me. They don't want me to do. They've, they've told me they've disinvited me to Christmas parties, um, birthday parties, vacations. Uh, I mean, they've just told me to stay away. Weddings. <laughs> Don't even come here. I've been. I was kicked out of a wake. I went to see my cousin who passed away, and I was told to leave the wake. Uh, it's just terrible. It's totally terrible, Christine. So before we close, if a, a a a young person is in that type of situation where they're they're being disowned by their family, I mean, give us. Let's just say you had that elevator discussion with them. Let's just say you, you hopped on a virtual elevator with them. What would you say to them to pick up their spirits or to give them, um, you know, just some words of wisdom? Understand that this too shall change. Um, as, as bad as you feel now, just think of a moment when you felt good. Uh, and also reach out for help. And even if you, if a parent or someone else isn't doing it, reach out for help with somebody that knows. There's any number of uh, telephone lines for suicide people, and you don't have to want to commit suicide to call them. Call them to say, who can I talk to? I just need to talk to someone before you reach the point of suicide or thinking about it. And, and in that respect, you know, 80% of us, and I've seen the statistic, 80% or more of, of us people, transgender people, think of suicide. 41% actually attempt it. In relation to the rest of society, 1% one, 1 or less attempted. So there's something horribly wrong with society. When, when trans, the transgender population, 41% are trying to kill themselves because they're of the way they're treated by the rest of society. And the racial component that's here is just so stark and in your face. You know, the scientific racism that existed back in the Holocaust and apartheid and the slavery of the South, it's just, it's just in your face recognized here when, when people do this to a transgender person. It's no different. Christine, I, I want to thank you so much for sharing the, these your words and sharing your experiences. Um, I want to give you a one-time round of applause. I, I do want to also ask you, I, I do want to ask you one other question. It's an Earth Day-related re question. Tell me today, with today being Earth Day, what did you do? Tell me one thing that you would do to make this um, the environment that much better. Well, what what I try to do is recycle all of my um, all of my bottles and my paper. Uh, I do it here, both here in the office as well as at my house. Um, I try to use public transportation when possible. And and as far as my 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 health products. I always use pump hair spray and not aerosol, and I've been doing that for <laughs> oh, ten, ten or fifteen years anyway. Even before I had the big hair. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. But I would Good like to, I would like I would like to okay. say one thing here, and I, if I could just finish with a haiku here. Uh, this yeah. is a haiku that this 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 is this is my delivery, my pitch to the judges. No pitcher washed up. He can't pitch to save his life. Knuckleball strike out. 
Now, that's me throwing a pitch and <laughs> striking out the judges. But uh, <laughs> when you were cheering, I thought they were they were at the baseball game listening to the pitcher strike out a, a pitcher, a uh, batter. So. But thank, thank you so much for having me come on and share. This is a real privilege and an honor, and, and I appreciate it very much to be able to have the opportunity to talk about uh, this particular need and giving you the, giving me the opportunity to do that, uh, Mr. Hicks. And, and, uh, and I do hope that uh, the people have learned something from the time that we've spent talking. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure we, we, we all have. And I want to say definitely our virtual doors are always open to you. So okay. whenever you ever – Whenever you want to come on to the show, you're more than welcome to come on to the show. But as we close, I want to say, what is the best way of getting in contact with you? Or And that was our discussion with Christine Connolly. Pretty good show. We're about to close out. In a couple of minutes, I want to just do a quick recap. Bomba Day, we talked with Danny Thompson, all things NBA. Really excited about him returning to HHN for one night. Chances are it's probably going to be more than one night, but those discussions are currently happening. He'll be on tomorrow night, uh, I believe, 8 p.m. Happy Hour Network. Um... As you know, the other podcasts I participate on with my tag team partners, Lee Val and Todd Vandenberg, Baseball, Beer, and Barbecue, we're on live every Saturday, Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And a real quick announcement. Baseball, Beer, and Barbecue is now part of the iHeartRadio network. So if you go to iHeartRadio.com and you search for Baseball, Beer, and Barbecue, you will find that that logo. We talk about everything on that show. It gets kind of crazy from time to time. Um, you know, we even spend a lot of time on politics. We talk golf. We talk you name it. We talk tennis, um, Cinema Savant will be on through that stream. Late Night Parents will be on through that stream. So we have another connection in with iHeart. Really happy about that. So once again, I want to thank the folks that made it a great show tonight. Danny Thompson at the top of the hour talking about NBA. Christine Connolly, a transgender parent. Telling her, telling us about her plight as she's, you know, uh, a parent and a daughter, and just the overall acceptance and the level of teen or youth transgender, the the suicide rate. Want to close out, folks? Um, as I mentioned before, next Tuesday in New York, it's time to vote. And it's really more of a time to say, hey, it's not about being Democrat or Republican. Listening to these candidates, seeing which one that you really align with, and hopefully there is one that you can align yourself with, with, you know, your beliefs or their beliefs. Um, So that's happening next Tuesday. Next Wednesday, we're going to be back on. Full-fledged show once again. Late Night Parents is back. I know we had a two-week break. Um, My office will be fully renovated on Sunday. I will include pictures on Late Night Parents of the renovation, the flood, everything else like that. Life is good. God is great. See you guys next week.